Uh, here, I think uh, uh, now we Can have... We start? Okay. We should start. Uh, I'm muted. No, I'm not muted. No, no okay. Yeah. Okay, so we will go on with a more detailed presentation of the way to use this program. And so, uh, so this is a little bit a repeat of what we have seen. But basically, I think what is important it is to see that we have developed this as a, a, an interface for non-specialists for people who are not doing uh, CFD the whole day. So we are going to, to go through the three main tabs of the program, drawing editor, simulation setup, and results visualization. So we will see how we can create a project, add new layers, entering heights of the building, moving building, selecting multiple building at once, deleting buildings also, adding new layers, moving between layers, selecting a version for simulation. Then after the simulation setup, that is you can re-enter the building height or modify the building height once you see the 3D uh, drawing, then you can define the simulation. You can also have clipping pane at this level to check that your input is the one. Then you can save the project and run the simulation. Then after, you can have different visualization, slice, threshold, streamline, building surface, and uh, you can add labels also. So that helps in reading the things. Then you can have clipping pane, which, uh, which is mostly important to see when you have a uh, uh, internal flows, you can generate PDF report, and then uh, there would be a few examples uh, after that. So, if we just about the installation, just a few words. So, you have to install uh, an open form installer, which has been designed to be installed under Windows, and then after you install the Vayuprava. Uh, software and then it should run one thing which is important is that the the file should be saved under the c drive they should be in the same c drive and not on others for the time being and also if you have another installation but now it would not be the case you would have to remove one installation before installing the next one so it has essentially three working tabs, the drawing editor, the simulation setup, and the result visualization. You can always uh, switch to one of the other. And then you have the, when you start, you can see the project which you already have in your, in your uh, uh, directories where you already have uh, stored. And then now if we want to see how you start a project. So you have a drawing editor, that's where you import the DXF file, then the simulation setup, then the logic. So when you are starting uh, launching uh, Vayu Prava, then you can either open projects which are existing, you can select them, the one which are already in your project list, or you can browse to search them in case they were not there, or you can create a new project. And if you create a new project, then it will add a project after here in this list when you launch again the... So, and then you can select one of the recent projects if you have them and click open, and then you will load the project and then you will see a list of the different cases that you have. Uh, then, once you have uh, create a new a new project or a new a new case, I will come back after to that. You have you have here the the structure as we mentioned before is that you have you have uh, oh sorry you have the layers. That means when you want to add a building, 
even a building which is a, a, a kind of a simple geometry, you have to create the layers, which is which is where you are importing then the the DXF file. So the structure is, as I mentioned before, you have project. In each project, you can have different cases. That means a case is a case of uh, of uh, a, a project that you have imported. And then after, you can have different version in the same in the same uh, case. For the same case, you can have different version. So here you have typically the example. If you have if you create a new case once you are in a project, uh, you can create a new case, and then after each case can be uh, simulated with different versions. That means when you move buildings or rotate. And that is how you, so importing the DXF that you, you, you open this file when you say add the layer, and then you open this, uh, this kind of, um, of uh, dialog. And there, here you have to add the height of the layer. So if start from the ground, the height of the layer initially is the bottom of the of the layer. So so for instance, if you start from from the ground, uh, you would set up it at zero, and then you can select the building or unselect some of them. So when they are when they are, uh, you can then decide which one you want to import in the project. For instance, here, this is the demonstration here. These three buildings have been removed, in a sense, from the import, import of, the, of the project. And then, uh, then you, can, you can click it, and then you are... So we will just show you a quick video showing how this works when you make a new project. So you have to give the, the name of the case and then save it. Oh, there is. Then you go and search for the for the input you want. Then you can select or unselect the building. Then you can uh, import it. And that's it. Yeah. Sorry. What is there? Where? Where am I? What is wrong? Then after that, you can you can you can create new cases. Once you have one, you can modify or you can first duplicate the cases, and then you create a new cases, and then they are numbered. So you can select each of them to change the height, and uh, you can also change the orientation if you want, and then you can also save it after. Uh, so here, what is important is that you have to understand at the beginning that when you are adding one layer, the height of the layer uh, oh, sorry, that's what something else I want to explain here is that actually, I think in many of the projects, you know you know the 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 size of the plot where you are. And this plot has some constraints. So we have not shown it here, but if you want to define uh, the, plot, the plot size, the best thing is to put a small buildings, very small and low height at the point of the, of let's say the edge of the plot. And then you keep them so that when you modify your building, you will be able to stay within the range, within let's say the, the the size of the of the plot, and this is a simple way to do it. And then after that, you can you can enter the height of the building. So I think we'll just show you a small video about it. So you can select the building in brown. The building is selected, so you can set up the height and. Uh, if you select all of them, you can select all of them at the same time. Okay, here is what. Sorry, now we have to go further. Then you can 
move the building. This is just a demo on how you can move. You can translate. Oh, I don't know why it's like this. Actually, you can move the building. You can also rotate the building. This you should do once you have already duplicated a case. That's the best. So, or you can change it without, but it's better to do it normally like this. Then, um, sorry, where is this? Okay. Now you can see that you can select different buildings. So you can you can select the building to set different heights. So here you have the, the height, the height of the building, the height of, the height means the height between the bottom of a layer and the top of a layer. So when you select them, if you are on a layer, then this is the height of the building. So you can select few buildings and change the height of these buildings. So you can You can see here how you can select the buildings, not uh, with the, oh, there is a problem with the video, sorry. And then you can set up the height of these buildings only. What happened with this? So you can also delete a building by selecting and then and then just click on the on the dustbin there and you can you can remove the building. So this is one other possibility. So if you just you just just to illustrate this, you can go there and remove and you say yes and the building disappears. So here, what you have to be careful in the present uh, version, I think we will improve that in a very near uh, update, that the layer, that when you are introducing a new layer, you have the height that you should add at, at the bottom of this layer. So if you are in a second layer, you have to add it on top of this layer here, for instance. And so that gives you then the, the bottom of a new layer that could be, for instance, uh, uh, one floor where you want to, to have an open floor, an open floor with internal flow. And then if you are working on here with this, if you select one building, then the height from the bottom of the layer up to the top is this one. This is actually if one wants the height of the layer from the bottom of this layer. I think it's important to take care of that. Then to illustrate, this is a little bit an absurd example, but it's to show you how you can superpose, in a sense, building with completely different geometries. And uh, you can see this, uh, the fact that you can add on top of the other something different. So you can very well have different shapes on buildings. So this is a little bit uh, uh, an absurd example, but it's really just to demonstrate that if you go, if you add this layer, then you can visualize after the two layers, which are, which are actually different buildings on top of each other. So you can see here the building on top of each other. You see the layer below and this below and the layer above. So you have the layer below and the layer above. So it's just to show you that you can really make a multi, a multi-stage kind of, of a system. So once you have prepared your your layers uh, with with open or all, we will show it later on. You can, you can then uh, enter into the simulation setup. 
That means you are going from this tab to this tab. The simulation tab setup is, is this one. So when you are in the simulation setup, you can still modify the height of buildings with the first number being the layer and the second number being the building number. And then this is the height from the bottom to the top of the layer. And here you can modify this. Then after you have to define the environment variable. That means you have to enter the height is one thing, but then you have to choose the surrounding environment. This is the profile of the wind, which is chosen in that. So you have different profile from suburbs to, or even Lake Sea. These are, these are different profiles, which are for wind and different uh, urban or suburban. Uh, then you can enter the wind direction with uh, from the north with an angle from the north then the reference wind velocity because often generally when you get uh, weather data you know at what height normally standard is 10 meter but sometimes it could be two meters or sometime another height the uh, so the reference height is also important to set up properly and then after that uh, you can also uh, you can also use the clipping pane at this moment. So that means here you have seen the building were higher before. And now you can also visualize here. It doesn't mean much in turn, but it shows you the, the feature. So before you run the simulation, you should save the project name if you didn't save before. So the moment you are saving the... So when you run, when you launch the simulation, you can choose approximate or detailed mode. In, in our presentation today, we show only the approximate mode because that's the one which we think is the most useful to start working with the with this software in the sense that it gives, gives quite rapid results. So during the simulation, you have these two bars. While it is meshing, that means preparing the mesh, it is this blue bar, which is blue. And then after, when the simulation is going on, you have a cursor showing the rest of the time. Here it is once you are completed, then you are uh, going to the, to the results. So we can show you just in uh, with the video, changing the height of some buildings, for instance, preparing the setup. I don't know what happened with this video. Something is wrong, sorry. So you can choose the, the profile, you can use the, you can clip also, as I showed you, this is maybe more interesting when you have an open building with inside or internal flows. And then you can uh, change. I think we will skip that because it's not, it's a very, I think we will, don't know, I'm sorry, there is a problem with something on the video, I don't know why. So here, during the simulation, you see that this is the meshing, and once the meshing is, is, uh, is covered, uh, it shows the rest of the time. And then after, you are ready at the end, sorry, you are ready at the end, you can clip here when it's done, when the two blue are there, then you can go to the results visualization and the result visualization you have a choice between different different variable so you can choose either a slice you can choose the different uh you can choose the different uh, uh variable that you can show that the pressure is one the velocity magnitude that means directional then you have the velocity in x, y, and that. That means along the wind or perpendicular to the wind or going up upwards. And then you can choose this. You can also choose the visualization type. So there are different, as I mentioned already in the first presentation, but you can have slice, threshold, streamlines, or building surfaces. So if you look at an example with the pressure, you can have the pressure distribution at a given height. For instance, we have taken a slice at the position of 
five meter. And then you can uh, show also the arrows, velocity vectors. So you can always have pressure and the velocity visually. You can see here, by the way, that the, the detailed meshing is around the buildings. And that is how the automatic meshing is done, though there are some criteria for that. And then after that, you can have uh, the velocity magnitude as well, instead of the, of the, you can see here, the velocity magnitude you can choose. And then you can visualize here, once you are at the end of the simulation, just to illustrate this, then it's loading the results. And then you can choose the variable. You can say how you want to have it. You can put, for instance, five meter height, and then you generate. You can remove the slice indicator if you don't want it to move all the time. You can just uh, stay stable. And then you can again change the variable. You can show the velocity magnitude. And then uh, you, can, you can add also Okay, sorry, that's not good. Okay, after that, you can add the velocity vectors. So you can, you can change the scale of the vectors arrows to show better if you want to show. Then you see here, the advantage, the, you can even enlarge them. You can even put, then you can zoom, you can, you can rotate, you can do a little bit, whatever you want. And then you can also place labels. That means you can add labels where you want to see or show the values at some point of the graphic, uh, which is, and you can remove the labels you have set up by clicking on the on the dustbin icon there. So here we have just a, a video showing how you add the label simply. So it's quite, you can add labels with pressure. The, the interesting thing is you can add different unit than the one you are showing on the slice. So that means you can put, for instance, velocity, uh, you can take the pressure, then you can, the other thing is you can also work on showing then the building surface, which is something very interesting because then you can get the pressure actually on the facade depending where you select. So you can uh, have a good idea on how the air airflow could go through the building if there is a sufficient uh, difference in pressure. So I think that's the one. And then, then you have another possibility, which is uh, the threshold. That means you can choose the domain. You say, if I want to see between, between, uh, 0 0.1 and 1.5 the velocity then you can see the domain where this velocity is happening and so this is this can be useful when you want to try to understand how the different zones are in, in the volume if, if you there are certainly some some better way uh, here this is the threshold visualization sorry yeah so you can you can select your domain and then you can see how the pressure is evolving so you can change again and it gives you a, a different a different view so it, it can be set up i mean that's the question after 
to know what you want to show. But it's quite uh, it's quite an interesting feature that you can look at volumes instead of having only planes. So the other output that you results you can look at streamlines, which means you can see how the air is actually the the air path, and then you can. You can increase the density if you want. Uh, there is one thing which is to notice here that the user could be surprised is that when you generate the streamlines, the results of the simulation are the same, but this utility for streamlines is giving a random uh, seed. So that means when you generate uh, new streamlines, even with the same condition, you may see different streamlines because the seeds are different so the number is fixed by the density but then you have the the seeds might be different so depending how you generate you will see a little bit different uh, streamlines because there would be too many otherwise i think this is uh then you can also change the size of the of the seed of the streamline so that either you zoom on one place or you or you enlarge the streamlines so it allows you to visualize how the air is how a particle of air is moving along the its own path i think it's a it's an interesting uh so if we if we look now, you can see we have a small video showing the streamlines so that you can move the, you can increase the density. You can increase it even more. So you can see also backflows, reverse flow. You can uh, you can then clip the plane if you want to see uh, different things. This is more for il illustration than really actual uh, interesting result we show here. You can remove the seed box. And you can also change the, the size of the seed box where you have the streamlines. So then you can reduce and then you can uh, run. You can again generate. You can change the clipping planes if you want and that's what you yeah. so the building surface representation i think is is quite uh, important sorry i think we have jumped Then another thing which is important is that you can adjust the scales. And uh, uh, by, by going into color map, you can say, I want to use a custom color range, and then you can change the range of the colors by doing that. And then once you go in this color range, you can choose the custom map color range that you prefer. So here, for instance, we have changed the pressure scale and so you can see also maybe better by arranging choosing a better a better um, okay now an important feature is generating a pdf report so you by going into you can tell the program to generate PDF report. And there you can choose which, which variable you are, you are using. Uh, the user of the scale, that means if you say minus five to four Pascal, for instance, you can choose the plane. If it's the Z normal, that means it's an horizontal plane perpendicular to the, to the Z or if and the axis bound as well so you can also select the the height uh the number of planes because this plane will be on the on the z axis and you can choose by choosing the the bound that means let's say from 0 to 18 meter you could generate every meter one plane 
and then uh, you are saving you can save the the report with the description which is always describing which is the variable and the name of it under and it goes into the report subdirectory of the project directory and then uh, then we can see here Why it doesn't work? Oh, it cannot. Sorry, I have a problem with the video. It seems okay. And now, after that, when you have different uh, simulation that you have done with one case and variation, then you can reload results. And when you reload, what happened? I'm sorry. I, there is, it seems, a problem with the video. I don't know why. Uh, so I, I, I can show you on the software when you want to reload. I think I can show you on the software directly if you want to reload results. You get, you get, uh, uh, you get the the different case and variant which have been uh, already simulated. So you can very well reload another results and visualize it okay so now the clipping plane i think this is a very interesting feature which we have added because if you want to show internal flows then you see first the building from the top for instance in this case you can rotate but when you are uh, when you want to look at the airflow inside the building then you need the clipping plane to see. And then you adjust the height of the plane so that you can see the velocity inside. So if we take this example uh, with multi layers, you can see here that we are uh, dividing the, the, the facade of the building in three typology. The A typology is the conventional rectangular closed facade. Then on top, we, we add up what would represent the seal height of the closed facade. And then we add the open part of the facade, which would have uh, the window opening uh, with maybe some element uh, aerodynamics. And then you can, you can then, uh, when we import the DXF file, you can choose what you are, what you select and what you take. And then, uh, what is this? This is something not working. I'm sorry, I have some trouble with the representation. I don't know why. Uh, what happens? I apologize, there is a trouble with this file. I don't know why, because the file are on the... I think I will relaunch the sharing. I don't know what... I will cut this and then start again. Uh, we start again from here, I'm sorry. Uh, wait a minute, I will again share the screen. Hello. And then I will launch again the same thing. I don't know what happened with the video. So, so now if we, I'm sorry, but there is a little, a, pro, a little problem. I don't know why. It is okay. So now you can see the multiple layer. Yeah. So here you see, as I mentioned, we have these three layers. Then you you have the three typology of layers that you have the A which is the kind of rectangular. The B is the facade with opening inside, but without opening outside, it's closed. And then the C is the part where you have the openings and then the next one is again the closed facade above the window. And then you again have the, the, the typical uh, 
So here you add the first layer. And then I will jump here. I think I will jump. And then you can, sorry, then you can add the building height for all. You select the building. You have seen that you can select the building by going with the cursor. And then you are in the position to set the height for the three building. So that means the first layer of the three building is set. Then Then you are adding the second layer where you select and you make sure. So that means again, the height, it's, it's very important to understand the layer height here is corresponding to the bottom. That means it is this five meter here. And then after, once you go, oh, sorry. When you enter the building height, now you have the height of the of the layer two, and we say you make two meter height for an example, and then this will add now. And then I will jump again on this because it seems it's not. And then here you can add now on top of this, the layer at the level seven, which is then the one where you have the openings. And then you can select them. You can select the different components and then you can add them. And then you can, we can try to see if the video is working here. Yeah. Here the video is working. So you can see that we, we add the, the layer on top. Then we select all the component of this of this layer component that we want to add. And then, sorry, there is a problem with this video. I don't know why I'm very sorry, but I think, and then you can add again the fourth layer and then you can add the fifth layer and then, and then you have the, the total of the building. So I will go through this directly. So now if you if you rep now when you go in in the into the simulation setup, then you can visualize the building with the setup, the first rectangular part, then the seal part, and then the opening part, and again the seal part. So you can see how this is then uh, working. Then you can prepare. If you, if you don't want to change any height in this case, you just go directly to the, to the condition of the reference wind velocity, the wind direction and the reference height. And then you can go uh, to the next. Let me just see, I think we are going to jump. Then you can see here, you can see how this, Oh, there are some problem with the video. I don't know why. So you can see how you can visualize before launching the simulation, how the building looks like. So now you define the, you choose again the condition and you can then run the, the simulation. So here again, you can always clip and see if your if your uh, if your geometry that you have set up is correct or not before launching the simulation. And then, okay. Then you have to save the file. If you have not yet uh, saved the 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 project, if it was a new project, then you have to save the file before running the simulation. Then you can, when you run the simulation, then you saving the file, saving the name. And then it start the simulation.
then once you are at the end, the two, the two green bar, normally it's blue, but if it has not been selected, the window, then it can be made white. But otherwise, when you see these two, uh, yes, then you can go to the results and it will directly load the results. And so then by default, it takes normally a slice. That means the horizontal plane, which is along the X axis. And it shows in this case, the pressure. And then you get the, the, the pressure slide, and then you can start working with your results as you want. So this is an animation of the things. So you can see that you can you can move easily with the mouse. You can turn. You can change the the the, the scales to change the colors. You can also add different features, and you can use your clipping plane to visualize the airflow here. The the, the the velocity is not at the right height because it should be into the uh, so i think here so here we we will not show this again i think the streamline you have seen how you can have the you can even have the streamline within the building actually you can see that some of them depending on the density you have not everywhere but you can see the results. And then you have uh, the results along the Z axis. Uh, so let's see the video. I think, I think I will show you on the software after it's better. So here you can see the clip. Then you can add values. And you can change the height of the clipping plane. And you can go into, I will show you now on the software. I think it's better directly. Uh, okay, so now. So here you see the same thing. Here you can see again can enlarge, you can zoom. Then. Okay, so this is the end of the presentation. I'm sorry, there were some problem with the video. I don't know why, frankly speaking. But here I can show you some example directly on the software, I think, which will be better. So now if you want to go to the how can I, how can I add, hide? Okay, so I will then do like this. To visualize. Okay, so now if you come back to the drawing editor, just to show you one example here of an open facade. So now if you want to, to make a new project, a new case, a new, sorry, a new, um, a new version, a new variant, what you would do is you just duplicate and then you can select the whole thing. And then once you are happy with that, then you can go into the simulation setup, right? And you can visualize, this is just an example to show you how you can make something with open, open things. And then if we go the result visualization of the previous case, we have, uh, I show you some other example. What happened? Okay, so now if we if we set up this, you can then zoom on the system. And if you put the slice, let's say 
at 10 meter height. Of course, this is a kind of virtual case, but you can see that you can visualize the airflow entering and going out with some kind of aerodynamic. This is just to show really what you can get. And then you can, you can add the velocity that you get inside the airflow. And so you, you can compare and see if you have a good distribution. So you can start working, for instance, you could change the angle or the size, or you could optimize. But basically this is to show the capability of the system when you are running uh, with very often, I think that when you have air passing along the facades, one has to develop some items. This is a little bit schematic, of course, but we have seen on the other case that you can have quite important entrance of air for a cross ventilation, even if the air is passing almost along the facade. So if we take another... Uh, So here you see in real time how this software is working. And uh, here we have oh, sorry, now we need to remove my So here you have a building where you can, if we remove the clipping plane, you see the building. If we put the, the slice at zero, then you see the building. Why it has not changed? If I say I put it one. So here you see the building with the opening. So now we can set again the clipping plane. And now we rise we rise the, the plane a little bit higher. And if we, so here then we can really visualize the air change. So if we remove the clipping plane, then we see the top of the building. And uh, this is, So I think I could show you Yeah. So now I can show you quickly uh, how you are changing the direction of the wind, for instance. So you can just see the wind velocity here. So if we now say 270 degree, then we have the wind coming like this. Then we say three meter per second. And we say we are going to run the simulation. Then you can see in real time, the kind of simulation uh, the meshing on a simple, of course, this is a one building external flow, but you can see really in real time here, we are using five, five CPU uh, cores i7 on this machine. And then you can see that the meshing takes a little bit time because it's looking, uh, I have seen before that, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's using snappy hex mesh to do the meshing, but it's uh, the parameterization is done automatically in the software. And uh, it takes a little bit time for the for the meshing. Now it will now the meshing is completed. And now you are entering into the simulation and you see that in this case, the simulation is really fast. It's about so the total time is about two to three minutes to get one result. And when you have simple geometry you are in generally below five minutes to get results and then you could uh, 
then you can see that the, the, the remaining time is quite accurate, actually. Uh, it, if it says uh, 38 or 40 seconds, it's actually what is happening in the real, uh, in the real results. And the moment we are reaching the, the end, then there is the finalization of writing the, the thing. And then if you are there, you see normally it's blue, then it will load the results and we can What happened? See, there is, which one was this? I don't know what is happening here. I think we reload some of the puzzle. This is... Here, would you like to uh, respond to the question? Yes, yes, yes. I think, I think I'm sorry. There is a little bit demo effect like usual. It's mm -hmm. only, uh, I don't know what has happened. Okay, yeah, we can take the question now and we can open even. Uh, so. Yeah, so uh, what I would suggest that uh, if you- We can stop share now. Ask question, they can raise their hand and then I will allow him to speak. Uh, okay, so shall we take the question? See, I could see one uh, hand raised uh, with the name air, uh, air pollution uh, lab. So okay. maybe you can ask. Where, where is that? Why is this question? No, no, the, the hand is raised. So. Uh, oh, okay. So then. So, so you can mute. Uh, do you want to ask the question? Uh, like the name written as Error Pollution Lab. Uh, you can unmute yourself. Uh, yeah. Yes, please. We can't hear you. You are mute, it seems. Can no. you unmute yourself? So maybe uh, in the meantime, you can write uh, your question uh, because we are not able to hear you. Uh, there was one more uh, person uh, who raised hand, but uh, then uh, lowered hand. Uh, Kulkarni, you still uh, want to ask your question? Okay, so otherwise we can take the... I think Prashant, if you can read the questions which are already yeah, there in the I chat think, box yeah, and the question and answer, do. then Pierre would be able to answer them. Yeah. 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 So That's there is on question and answer, there is a question from Sebal Saha. So maybe you can start from there. Yeah. So uh, anyway, the first basic question was uh, the can the result will be, uh, we, can we visualize the results in uh, para view? So that uh, yes, uh, actually you can because the, I mean you just need to because the the files which are produced are anyway the the input is STL files and then after they are uh, files which are read from from uh, 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 from the open form so you can very well load them in uh, Paraview if you want to do your own uh, your own specific analysis with Paraview. 
Um, then the next question is, uh, uh, you said something about design optimization. Did you mean uh, manual optimization where the user need to input different building configurations to observe the wind pattern? Does the software include automatic optimization algorithm, which can reorient or replace the given blocks for better uh, air ventilation? No, there is no, opti I don't know what would be the criteria for optimization. I mean, in a sense, uh, I think you, this is going too far. Maybe it can be done with machine learning later, but it's far beyond what we pretend to do with this software. This software leaves you the space to take a first uh, sketch or let's say a first uh, drawing of a project or a one building even, and then you can yourself change the orientation, the position of the buildings or the height or whatever. And then you compare the results. And basically the idea is that you get, you can make PDF files, which are uh, of the same kind. That means you, you give them the same kind of height and the same kind of planes. And then you can compare uh, already. What, what we are uh, aiming at for the next version is to have something which could better quantify the airflow going through the project. Because one, to us, one of the main uh, uh, parameter to know whether you are successful in bringing uh, air movement within the project is that you should have a ratio of, of air compared to a free flow which should be as high as possible. For instance, as an example, if you take one building, which is, uh, if you take the wind coming against the first building, and if the other building are behind like this, then the first one will get the good wind, the next one not. So by changing orientation, by changing the space, by ch maybe running also on the height, depending on the possibility in architecture, then, but this is a work I think that architects are used to do and with engineers and the simulation, I would say I don't talk of optimization in the mathematical sense. I talk of my optimization more in architectural and projects and that means you are coming from one situation and see how you can improve it. There is no, uh, let's say, ambition to make machine learning and optimization algorithm uh, which would which would take two, three PhD to develop, I think. Mm -hmm. Does it answer the question? Yeah. So uh, then there was another question mm -hmm. about multi-directional wind simulation and single run. No, the, the, the answer is no. Uh, the recording session that I think it's up to you. I'm not sure, Prashant. Yeah, recording can be shared. Uh, then after there is a question about uh, buoyancy driven simulation. It's not yet in the program uh, because we really wanted first to solve the cross ventilation issues, which do not depend much on buoyancy and the buoyancy driven simulation. Uh, the other uh, difficulty that then you should start having also the, the thermal mass of the whole thing and the dynamic, and this is much beyond what we can pretend to do with such a project. But we may add the, the buoyancy driven uh, uh, model into it for some of the chimney, if we know the temperature of the chimney and thing like this. So there, there is certainly uh, a possibility to consider for the next version, but we cannot uh, promise at all. So we don't know yet, I will say. Then access the results in Paraview as yes. After meshing, if you have Paraview, then you can check the mesh. Uh, the, the idea is that, again, this software is not for specialists of CFD. If you are a specialist of CFD, you use OpenFoam directly. If this is for people who are, who want to get a first cut and let's say a reasonable answer of what is really good and what is really bad. We, we are not aiming at having at the person uh, at the person level the results. What we want is to tell you, okay, this simulation show that there is no air movement after the first building or it's they are too narrow or they are, there is many. And then the, the main goal is to go for, let's say, a, a practical optimization, not at all mathematical optimization. 
Does the software recognize aperture? Yes, I have shown it to you. I mean, what do you mean by recognize aperture? It is uh, the, the, the aperture are given by the, by the drawings with the layers. And the, the wind speed at the moment are not average per room. They are localized, the wind speed. And then there is how to minimize natural ventilation. Oh, this is a more difficult question. How to minimize the natural ventilation performance gap between design stage and actual operation? Again, this, this, this software does not mean that you are going to do a very accurate uh, uh, simulation with a lot of detail that you could do with, uh, with for instance, uh, Fluent or Flowvent or a program like this. It's really to get you uh, to, to be able to compare essentially. The, the, you know, in design architects generally, they like to work on alternative design. So you, you make a first proposal and then you change. So before changing, doing this simulation gives input to the architect for instance on how you can change. So you can change during the meeting. It's so fast that you can directly that you can directly go uh, uh, together with the architect, even the client or the landscape engineer and discuss the whole and do different assumption uh, and check them and compare them and say, okay, this, this uh, solution is very poor for natural ventilation, cross ventilation, or it is very poor or it doesn't work. But then, then in the real project, of course, there will be other constraints. It's not just a mathematical optimization of Nobody is going to design a complex of building only on this parameter, right? So this is a way to help. This is one of the main parameter, but it's not the, the only one. I mean, you have also the orientation towards shading or shading, etc., which is part of the whole thing. So it's really something to go beyond, let's say, the single building simulation uh, approach that you can really see how buildings are influencing each other in terms of a natural ventilation, wind-driven natural ventilation. How can we know the result converge at the end of the situation? Do we have any plot? No, you, you, you can't see, again, this is again a question of specialist of CFD. We have chosen that generally after uh, in the range of 300, thousand convergence we are quite near we have done some sensitivity study during the development to show that normally we are very near to the to the stable solution so there is nothing to i mean you can do it if you go in open form yourself with the with the with the stl file and the, and the file off but not it's not planned to have it the mesh size also you cannot change because it is decided by the software. I mean, the main goal of this software is not to replace a full scale uh, CFD with all the parameter where you can play everything. The game is to have that people not specialized in CFD can use this to make real projects and, and taking very little time, right? Can we solve the energy equation? Uh, no, I don't think you can solve the energy. I depend what you mean by energy equation. You can indirectly, uh, it, 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 is, it is isothermal simulation. It's wind driven isothermal simulation. So there is energy equation could be uh, calculated on the energy that you have in the, in the quantity of movement of the airflow. The turbulence model, you can refer to the publication we have shown in the first presentation, you have the reference. Then uh, can the slice be in dead X, dead Y, yeah, all the axis, in the three axis, of course, the slice can be. Uh, then do we have transfer equation? Do we have heat? No, there is no heat transfer in this software. It is purely wind-driven isothermal simulation. What we want to see is how the airflow is going between the buildings and how it can go across the building when they are open. This is the, ga the game is to in 
be able to improve the natural cross ventilation. That's the main goal of this software. Can we do it for a fluidized bed reactor? What, what, uh, I don't know what, I don't understand this question. Could you, could you elaborate? Can we do simulation for interior of building? Yes, interior of airflow in buildings, it can happen, of course. I mean, we have demonstrated that, you have seen it in the presentation. You can, you can have uh, uh, internal flows. They can be drawn. We will develop more example while, while going on with the next training program. How can we get a copy of software setup file? If official release happened later, can we get a copy of beta release? Oh, this, this I don't. <coughs> the software will be available for download, this version. And then you will be able to use it and come back with your comments and uh, can we add the weather file of windrows? The windrows, you use it to define your, your actually uh, the weather, you cannot add the weather file because here it's not, it's not the windrows also, you, you are giving the wind direction and the reference height and the velocity that you consider, this is up to your knowledge to know, we, we can give guidance on it, is that if you take a windrows, typically you can get them with climate consultant quite well for many sites. And if you look at the, at, if you not have nothing else, you can use climate consultant and then you, you, you select the night when it's the hottest in the year and you look at how the, the wind direction is the most prevalent in the hot summer, in the very hot summer. And generally we can see that often in India, at least uh, on very few places, we have a, mostly a wind coming from the west a lot. And generally with some inclination, you are getting the wind which is prevalent during the summer, the hot summer. Then after there is, are there other? Uh, uh, so one thing, uh, what is written as feedback link. So uh, you can write back to uh, the email ID. Uh, I will also put it in yeah, yeah. chat. Uh, it's pmtu at the rate bpindia.org. Yeah, there is one question at the end is, uh, would you mentor the new users? Of course, we, we have we are we we have developed a user manual, but which is essentially a functional user manual. But we are working on finalizing a guidance manual, where we try to to show example uh, in in uh, let's say not validation, but showing some existing project where such strategies have been used, and uh, and uh, for instance. Uh, we, we are definitely willing to help in mentoring you new users and that can be also through, I think, a user, a user group as well as we, we have, uh, we have, uh, we are ready for the next six months at least to make a quite uh, um, intensive support, not only, uh, it means not only for the use of the program, but if people come with, with uh, uh, important question and how uh, and even designing the natural ventilation of course we are going to supply more and more example how to use the software for different architectural strategies and for different kinds of opening different kinds of of element of facades how to make a little bit a new approach into the natural vent cross ventilation so here, the, there are questions of recognized curved surface. The curved surface, if you I can maybe launch again, sorry, I launch again the software and show you maybe. I think, can I, yeah, I think I will share my screen. Where is Paim? When, I mean, if you want, OK. 
Okay. Okay. So now if you go, if you look at the layers, actually, you, you cannot have hyperbolic. You can, you can follow different shapes. So I think this is the one where I have. So you see, you can follow this kind of shapes and these shapes can be also, they may not be circular. They, they can be, they, they could be a circle. We have not frankly tested that because it's not so common for residential. We have, especially we have thought of this software to help in residential building rather than fancy. I mean, if you make fancy drawings with very funny shapes, I think you can pay for real simulation with a very with a commercial software i would say this software is made for the use of let's say uh uh affordable housing or mid-scale housing and i think uh, the kind of building where you have these curved windows and all this i think it is of second order in against the opening so the the shape can be you see that here we are able to to eat up any kind of shape almost. But on the hyperbolic dome, I have seen one of the one of the question about uh, hyperbolic dome. I think you, you should do it with different layers. That means you should build up one layer, then one layer a little bit smaller, etc. So you can approach a hyperbolic dome, but you cannot just enter this shape at once. So, yeah, here we have. Uh, Pierre, uh, another yeah. question is, uh, can we import CAD files to the project or it has to be a specific kind of file? If yes, There's DXF file, it eats yeah. up DXF files. So that means typically if you have a, if you have DWG file, you can export them into DXF and then uh, you can, uh, you can, you, you may have to clean it if there are too many things inside or there are too many elements which are not of relevance for the simulation. Mm -hmm. The basic idea to, when we started the development was to have a solid kind of building in a sense, not open. We have added opening after so that means uh, we now now we can really go with uh, if we come back to the to the let me just show you the 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 thing we have in the validation if I come back uh, uh, let me just let me just show you the kind of thing we can do with buildings now we can simulate uh, this one yeah. I think this one, you see that this building point, it shows that we can really simulate airflows mm -hmm. inside buildings now. So you can very well do project where you have only one building and to for as long as it is wind driven, it will give you a quite, uh, quite decent results compared even to commercial software. But if you want a special shape, then you should you should do your own. That means if you suppose, then you should make layers, which makes a dome. That means you have different layers. But then it's not uh, it's not that. Uh, I mean, it can be done, but it's it's not uh, the the the, in, the import is DXF two D, and then after you are creating the the third dimension with the height of the building and different layers, so you can. You can play with the layers and, and do a kind of, of a sandwich of different layers. You can add as many layers as you want. So you can very well make a shape which is a little bit funny for a building. But the idea is mostly basically to give the chance of people to think more about how you make the building layout uh, in, uh, in uh, the building layout of, of residential project, essentially. It's not designed for fancy building because then normally when you do this fancy building, you get sufficient money to, to pay somebody to do a real CFD simulation. Does it answer? I, I cannot see anymore the question. Where can I see the question now? I could not see the chat. Uh, at the bottom, uh... 
you will find an icon for chat no but somehow i don't know why can you show me where is it here no where is the chat okay let me read out uh, the yeah. questions there are some other questions uh, uh, the question is, is the DXF lines imported uh, be a closed polyline? So that it must be, it must be closed, must yeah. Be. I mean, yeah, we, we had some trouble with some of the first tests that people did not close. And we, we didn't know first why it was not working. And then when we tested in our algorithm, we could see that it is necessary to close. And this is very quickly done. You just take any, any DXF file, which is more or less closed, you import it into a... Uh, a DXF editor or uh, let's say a CAD, uh, I mean even a 2D CAD, uh, cheap, free or free 2D CAD, and then you 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 tell it it's closed, and then it will work. So, for instance, if we go in this, uh, for instance, in this kind of of uh, shape, these are all elements which are themselves polyline closed. So you need to draw them in such a way that it is, it is, they are all polylines which are closed. And so you can have as many as you want. So it's very simple with a tool like SketchUp to develop this, for instance. Uh, we have done some example, we'll make more to, to demonstrate. Yes, Prashant, you have more? Yeah, so there is one question related to this, which is uh, kind of answered already. The software, uh, this software would be helpful to understand wind flow pattern in a group of building, but how could we show ventilation potential of a floor of a single building having multiple flat? It is exactly what we have here, for instance. If yes. I, this one is an example of this. If you, if you see here, you have a building where we have, we have open, I mean, you could even open all the floor if you want, but it would be a lot of layers, a lot of work. The idea here is, if you would take, for instance, suppose you want to look at the airflow in one building mm -hmm. in a given situation, you could very well take a lower floor open and a higher floor open. Then you would get a good idea of the influence of the wind profile. Mm -hmm. But typically what we did here is to demonstrate, the idea is demonstration of the feature. So we have taken half the height of the building as at the half, we are we we open one floor and we have opening and we we can design the opening and then we can see how when the wind is passing by, how this kind of of uh, whether they are I, I, this could be shutters or windows. It need not be a specific fins or something. It can be very well integrated in the design of the component of the facade without mm -hmm. having a fixed element. They can very well be mobile. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the next next question from uh, Kalpana Tyagi is, as we can see, the curved surfaces are not shown in your example. Can we the, the curved surfaces also? No, we have not shown, but we, we will try to approach as much as possible. Frankly speaking, it was... It was not our idea again, because we think that when you start doing curved buildings, then you are no more in the residential housing. We are in something else. So that was not the first intention, but we will, we will consider that. Uh, add, we will add example with as many, we can add some other funny shapes so that, so that it's possible. We can even try to make a kind of false dome to show how it looks like. It's not too mm -hmm. difficult to generate. But it's not the aim. The main aim of this software is to help for a residential project with many buildings, how you make that's in a dense urban area. You try to optimize the airflow available for natural ventilation at night. This is the main objective of this software. It's not to replace the expensive CFD to make all the kind of very specific geometry. But it can be adapted partly, yeah, we will do that. Okay. Uh, then the next question from Prajita is, do we need UDF for wind in Z direction for vertical wind profile? Do we need what? I did UDF. not understand. UDF. UDF. Uh, uh, what Prajita? is UDF? Uh, it's a, it's an acronym I don't know. 
can you say udf what is it it is user defined function so huh i don't think it's required uh, what, what is udf i i frankly speaking it's not an acronym that i i may record once i but i don't know nobody is can you it's can user people, defined function it is say it again user defined function i still don't understand what it is uh what what is this udf say again the the three words you say user defined function ah yeah of course you you can i mean we, we have not yet given this opportunity but we could certainly add it i think that's a good point yeah, if people have their own if you have your own profile then one thing we have not developed in this presentation is the future because when you are building one project you may have fields around maybe a few years later they will have other building around so what we are proposing we will make some example of this uh, is that we will show that you when, when you import the the buildings before importing you can add some very low uh, future building i mean and then you keep them around your your layout and then you have them around and then after when you do a, a first optimization with free air around then you can add this building later to see how much they will influence your design so i think it's really uh, very uh, uh, flexible but of course we need to further elaborate the guidance of this my, of this uh, the use of this software but you know we don't have infinite human resource to develop this <laughs> and we had to we had to to make first the software that we can show that it's working and now we will the more and more we will do this training and this feedback from users we will we will increase let's say its usability by showing example which are relevant and i think this uh, this remark of the of the profile is something we could very well add uh, your own profile uh, by giving it with a simple file or by entering it somewhere i think that's something we can do quite easily yes. so something in the same direction uh, one comment from uh, ashish nar any any future development to import 3d file uh, format like dot uh, 3dm or so not not at the moment but we, we frankly speaking it's not the, the idea is really you get the very uh, beginning uh, project we, we want we want this tool to be used essentially on the early design chart you know to know that when when the landscape engineer the architect the client they start sketching things we can directly work on this and they don't have a 3d at this moment they have only even hand sketch even you you can translate the hand sketch in the dxf mm -hmm. and yeah. then you import and then you do and then you discuss with them and say okay what if we would change either the height of the building either the depths either you know we we can we can work with different dxf but basically the idea it is a 2d input and then we make the 3d inside the building and and again we don't want to make a absolutely fancy building with very special things because this is to cater to the need of better design of residential complex essentially this is the main aim of this project and we cannot run after so many objective even if we would like you know we cannot we cannot we will not be able <laughs> to do this so i think we we purposely uh, restrict in a sense the idea of further development to the sink we think are really useful of course if there are a lot of of uh, people asking for specific feature that we think we can add of course we will do it but we have mm -hmm. we have let's say uh, i think within 6 months we will have a frozen kind of system and then after the development can be taken uh, over by other people later but i think now what we want is really that it's tested and and used by people who work on real project and tell us okay if you could add this or change this or that how can we use it better so i think the the guidance all these question are very useful for us because we it will help us in framing the guidance manual better we already have a kind of internal draft but we didn't were not ready i would say to issue it 
but now with the question i think we have more we have more uh, uh, latitude to do this i think are there other question or remark uh, or? another question is can this software consider the dampening damping of building structure i don't think so what is the damping of building structure no i think again i think don't imagine this software can answer very specialized uh, question i think uh, the 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 damping i don't understand exactly what what it's meaning by damping can be maybe better explained uh how can I? So, uh, vibration during the wind flow, so that is what uh, he meant. I mean, it, we we do. Let's say it's not uh, it's not less. It is uh, it is uh, the the equation which are in open form have maybe some some LES uh, possibility, but we have not considered that for the time being. And it's not uh, we we are using the runs. This is the good old Navier-Stokes uh, equation set. And so so we are not uh, trying to run less because this is again. Uh, and the, 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 I think we 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 will stay on this uh, on this uh, Navier Stoke uh, approach, which is in open form for the for the model we are using now, and the results are good enough so that we don't look at other things. And the the high turbulence is not of interest in this project. What we want is really to see how we can improve the the. The, the air flow across the buildings and around the buildings and the, the mm -hmm. turbulence is not something that we want to, I mean, the, the turbulence is taken into account because there is a K epsilon model into it. So there is anyway, the turbulence taken into account, but not to this level of damping. And I don't know what's, what exactly is meant by this damping. Uh... Okay, uh, another question is uh, to model a stilt floor, what is the methodology? To model a stilt floor? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you can do it. It's not, it's easy actually because, because I mean, you, you can, I mean, you can either not consider the piles because you do you, you, the column, you, you could add them if you want. But let's say if you have a drawing with 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 the columns of the stilt, you can add them from zero to three meter, for instance, right? And then you just put a rectangular building on top of it with the layer. So you can very well do that, yeah. Yeah, that's an example we can do. But but I would say this is often actually it's a, it's a good question because we often have this kind of discussion in project where people want to either get the wind uh, across the, the 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 steel space or opening between two two uh, floors for instance saying yeah we open half a floor or one floor and we let the air go through so this software can so we will prepare some example of that because it's a very good question because we had exactly this question in two or three design project we have been working in india on where the architects say, okay, if I open between, if, if, if I keep one floor completely open, uh, what happens? Then actually we can see that it's not sufficient to bring air across the project. It will bring air up to some level, maybe to the next building, but not even on the whole facade, of course. And the next building behind will have nothing. So I think it's a, it's a good question, the stilt and the opening between floors. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the another question from Rahul Verma is: Can we import DXF file of multi-story building with a different floor plan? I mean, you you have to import each each different uh, floor plan one after the other. Yeah. So that means you 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 import uh, 
you import again if i if i come back to the to the where is that uh, yeah if i show you if i show you uh this this is what fin zero no this is facet opening no this is not the one where is it uh I think I have to open another project. Uh, give me one second to just look for. Uh, so here, for instance, if I show you this, if we go into the simulation setup, just to show you. You see here, suppose this are, this is done with, uh, sorry, I have the, okay, I'll do this. Here, if you go back to the drawing editor, now if you see, you have different layers, right? So now if you have different uh, floor plans, it's exactly the same. You, you just have to have the first floor plan at one level, then you add one layer, and then you can have different floor plans at different uh, levels. So it's not difficult to do. It's only to have the DXF, and then you have to, to build. I mean, if you, if you send us an example, we would be happy to make it with taking your, your drawings and, and showing you how we can do it. This is typically something that makes sense, actually, because we, you will have this kind of problem. We already have, and it, and if you see in this case, when you go on the simulation setup, you know, you see that you have it, it's not a very nice example, but you can see we have this, we have one layer which is full, then we have one layer which has a profile, then we have another layer which has opening, then we have another layer which has, and we can very well have the internal uh, drawings as well included in the in the for a floor for a given floor are there other question or um, i think uh, the questions are over now okay question and i have just written uh, in the message box that again the same email address pmt at the rate yeah. .org, uh, if they have any uh, additional question yeah. comments yeah yeah, yeah they can I, communicate uh, over email i think it's very good that people send their question whatever has been uh, on the chat now it's very good to have all these questions because we will look at all of them and we will sort them also out by in different categories because many of these questions are in relation to how you can use the software. Some other are more scientific or technical and some other are more of new feature that we could add, I think. These are the three main uh, questions. So yeah. the most important to answer quickly and to which will help us in the guidance to use the software are the one which are the different use that you have been uh, talking about, some of you. I think it's very interesting to see that uh, we can cater to most of this with the software as it is now. Because uh, remember that we have, uh, we were able to to demonstrate the, the use of, of Airflow uh, Insight. And so if we come back to this, if I come back to this, for instance, here, you can really see that internal flow can be simulated. So that means instead of having, let's say, 20 buildings, you can very well one building and look at different solutions for the facade, the openings, and the internal uh, partition even to some extent and see how it can work by playing with layers. So if some of you send us some drawing of projects in the DWG or DXF of different floor plans, then we can try to make example out of it. Yeah, and uh, regarding the... Uh recordings and the software tool uh, we will uh, we will get back to you over the yeah. email.
we all we have uh, your email ids of yeah. all of you so we will uh, communicate over email So, uh, so basically, uh, like uh, we come to the end of this session or the training program. This is the first, and we we will have uh, uh, more uh, during the future. And then uh, we, yes. we also have some learning from this training program how to further improve it, and that we will uh, try to address in the subsequent sessions. Um, and there is, there is one thing I want to apologize is that the, the, the PPT were working perfectly here on my computer, but when you run it through, uh, I don't know, there has been some funny thing with the video, for instance, some jumping and something that I'm very sorry that we will check why is it so because it was not planned so, so they were in the second presentation, there were obviously a few problems that were not not doing a good impression for the presentation. I, I'm sorry for that, but that's uh, something we're not uh, envisaging. So I think we need to make another strategy for the video embedding in the presentation. But that's... Uh, that's uh... Okay. So, okay. So I think uh, if there are no other questions or remarks, yeah, I think I would like to thank peers <laughs> for taking all the effort, in fact, to develop the software first and then uh, uh, doing the training program, uh, the first training program, I would say. Um, yeah. And uh, thanks to all the participants for staying back for so long. And even with the some technical glitch up which happened and we need to reconnect, then also we could get yeah, yeah. number participants. So I am thankful to all who have remained during the session. Uh, and of course, we will uh, get back to you with the presentation links. Software. And then so, and, and then we, we expect to exchange with the people uh, using it mostly on real project. Huh? I would say this is where we think we can help. We, we, we hope that we can help on real projects. So if people uh, give us some of their project we can of course decide what is confidential or not huh? after that's up to you we have to, you have to tell us this is confidential we don't want this out but then we can use this as generic example without naming or we can we can clean them so that it's not uh, recognized or something like this so if there are issue on confidentiality we can we can very well be uh, taking care of that in the sense that if you have question on project, but you don't want to share, we can very well work on it and later make it as a kind of uh, generic case, which is useful for everybody, but not, uh, not disclosing thing that should not. I think it's, uh, but we are, we are looking forward for people using it and then uh, giving us feedback and also bugs, I mean, errors and things which will obviously come. Uh, we also will uh, answer to them as much as we can. So we, we, we have the, the provisions for support for the next uh, six to eight months, at least to, to, I mean, from us directly. Then after we hope that we can have support which can be shared with uh, an institution maybe like an IIT or a group of users or we that we are working on this is part of and to see also that this software can go on after maybe evolving also later and uh, be improved okay so with this uh, like uh, words uh, I would like to, uh, Samir, you, would you like to add anything before I formally close the event? Uh, no, no, Prashant, nothing from my end. You okay. can just so, announce that how the people will be getting the presentation and the, uh, so still there are people asking about it. So you can just once again repeat yeah. how they will get the program. 
Yeah, so uh, I we do have uh, email IDs of all of you, and we will communicate over email uh, all the things like the presentation links, uh, the software download links. So all those will be yeah. shared with you over over your email address. So I uh, so I think uh, you will receive uh, everything. So essentially the email address which you have used during registration. Yes. Right. Yeah, maybe because because uh, because people are uh, putting their emails here in the chat box. So we will be using all the emails which people have used during their registration. So we will be sending them the mail. Yeah. Yes, Prashant, you can go ahead. Okay, then okay. so I just maybe I think just the time uh, i think it's a uh, it's it's uh, I, I hope it will help in uh, in maybe not changing but maybe uh, helping people to look a little bit differently when the early stage of projects are set up or even if we come back to to the to the idea of even uh, uh, of even the what we were saying about this uh, this uh, district uh, that could happen. Uh, we that that for instance that could be also of help for some of the municipality in some case for design of new areas, new districts. Maybe this could be taken into account. There has been a very serious work in uh, Hong Kong on this kind of approach. It's the only place where I could see really a, such a an intensive, extensive study on how to arrange the, the districts to take care of natural ventilation. And I think this software has this potential to also help in this, not only for a residential project, but beyond that for aligning streets or different things. So I think there, there is, in my opinion, with, with more uh, work and development, uh, tremendous potential for this kind of software being free and relatively easy to use. So I thank you all for your attention and uh, we will be uh, interacting uh, again, certainly. Okay, thank you very much everyone for joining for this event and uh, surely we will connect with you over email. Thanks.